I'm going to go over a few problems from Math 3 Unit 1 Worksheet 2. Uh, we're going to start with number 2. The instructions here say to graph the following equation. State the domain and range of each graph in interval notation. And uh, we're looking at translations of graphs here. So the first thing we need to do is identify what kind of graph we're working with. And there's four kinds that we're studying. Uh, it could be linear, quadratic, absolute value, or exponential. And number two, uh, notice you have the x minus 2 in parentheses squared. That squared right there is telling us it's quadratic. And then this has been translated. This minus 2 and this plus 1 uh, tell us how this is translated. The minus 2 is telling us to move to the right two units. And the plus 1 is telling us to move up one unit. So we take the parent graph of the quadratic, move it right two units, and up one unit. And uh, so it's, it's important to know, well, our parent graph uh, has a vertex at 0, 0. So in my graph from 0, 0, I'm going to move right 2, up 1. And I'm going to put a point, and that's my new vertex. If you want, I'll put a V there for vertex. But And from there, it's gonna, we're going to have that U shape. I need another point. I'm going to pick uh, an x value uh, to the right of that. So I'll pick 3. I want to know what y is. So if I plug in 3 into the function g, I get 3 minus 2 squared plus 1. Follow order of operations. Do what's in the parentheses first. So 3 minus 2 is 1 then exponent, so 1 squared is 1, and 1 plus 1 is 2. So we plugged in a 3, we got a 2. That's a second point. And so we know this is the right half of the U shape. And so the left half is going to, it's symmetric, and so um, we automatically can find a third point. Which is the, kind of the mirror image of the other across from the middle of this graph, which we call the axis of symmetry. So we have graphed the equation. We got three key points. Uh, we did this by identifying what kind of equation it is and what the graph is going to look like, and then also looking at the translation. Um, that's part A. Part B, we want to state the domain and the range in interval notation. <coughs> so remember the domain is how far left and how far right. It deals with the x-axis or the x-values. And a pr um, when we're working with a parabola, um, both arrows look like they're pointing up, but they're pointing up and to the right and to the left. So as I extend those arrows, we'll keep moving to the left and to the right as far as we want. So all gaps are closed. So my domain, a big capital D for domain, is from negative infinity to positive infinity. And remember, we use parentheses with infinity always. Our range, on the other hand, uh, notice we have a lowest point, which we call the vertex. And the lowest point is at a height of 1. And there's no maximum point. The arrows just continue to um, go up as high as they want. So the lowest point is 1. And we include that with a bracket, because it actually reaches 1. And there's no highest point, so go to infinity. And so there's our domain and our range written in interval notation. Let's go ahead and take a look at number 5 now. OK, 
Okay, so first you want to identify what kind of equation you're working with and what that equation will look like. We have those two vertical uh, line segments surrounding the x plus 1, so this is absolute value. And if you recall, the absolute value looks like a v-shape. The, pa um, the parent graph of an absolute value uh, has a point at 0, 0, just like the parent graph of the parabola. Uh, but we have a translation here. This plus 1 is going to move us to the left one. There's a plus 1 here, there's a plus 0 outside. So we're, we're moving uh, left 1, and we're not going to move up or down at all because we got that plus 0. The negative 2 thirds is not part of the translation. That more gives the, the shape of the parent graph. The negative is going to tell us it's opening down. The two thirds kind of gives us the slope of the uh, of the each line on the or line segment or ray from the v. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the parent graph point. I know the parent graph um, has a vertex at zero zero. As you remember, I'll I'll do a little sketch here. Parent graph, um, maybe look something like that. Uh, starts at 0, 0. Uh, so from 0, 0 I'm going to go left 1. So there is the tip of our V. Need to get another point. And to do that, uh, notice we have a fraction. And so I want to pick a value that's uh, going to help here. And I want x plus 1 to be something that we can divide by 3. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plug in a 2 for x, because if I plug in a 2 for x, I get 2 plus 1, which is 3, and I could divide that by 3. So I want x to be 2, and so I'm going to get y is going to equal negative 2 thirds times the absolute value of, of sorry, 2 plus 1. And that's equal to negative 2 thirds times the absolute value of 3. Absolute value of a positive number stays positive, so negative 2 thirds times 3. If you want, you can make that times 3 over 1. And then we multiply straight across, we get negative 6 over 3, which is negative 2. So positive 2, negative 2 is a coordinate that this graph will go through. and that's the right side of the V shape. This is upside down. And so from the vertex I went down one, two, th and right one, two, three. So I'm gonna find, using symmetry, I'm gonna find the left side by going down to left three. So that point is at negative one, two, three, four, negative two. And if you try that out, if you plug in a negative 4 for x, you'll, you should get negative 2 for y. And you do. Uh, so that is the graph. And that's for part A. And part B, we want the domain and range and interval notation. For the domain, you should see that this is going to go as far left and as far right as we want. So it's all real numbers. So we put negative infinity to positive infinity surrounded by parentheses. And the range, it's got a highest point, and the highest point, you're thinking about the height, you're thinking about the y-axis, so it's, um, it's at zero. It's not above the x-axis, it's not below. So the highest point is zero, and there's no lowest point. If we extend those arrows, it will go as low as we want. So the lowest is negative infinity, the highest is zero, and it actually hits zero, so we want a bracket. Number eight, we need to first decide what kind of function we're looking at. Notice that uh, x is in the exponent. It's a, you know, it's raised a little bit above the three. Um, it's in the superscript, so we call that an exponent. So 
this is exponential. Um, the plus two is with the x. Usually, we don't write it, but there's a you know an implied parenthesis there, and there's nothing over here. So this is translated to the left two units, and it's not moved up or down. And then we got to remember some stuff about the parent graph. You know, uh, with the parent graph, the point went through 0, 1 for the exponential, and we had this uh, horizontal asymptote along the x-axis, and it looked something like that, right? And so when we move something to the left, that doesn't change where our horizontal asymptote is. The horizontal asymptote will only change if you're moving up or down. So I'm going to, the horizontal asymptote will stay the same because we're not translating up or down. So I'm going to label that. That is the equation y equals 0. The, the parent graph point did move. It was at 0, 1. We moved left two units. So now we're at negative 2, 1. And <clears throat> remember, when we pick a, another point, we always want to pick to the right of that point in order to get an integer value. So I'm at negative 2, so I'm going to pick negative 1. So if I plug negative 1 into function h, I get 3 to the power of negative 1 plus 2. Uh, remember, we have an implied parentheses here. Order of operations says do parentheses first. So this is 3 to the power of 1, which is 3. So negative 1, 3. And I'll, I'll do one more here. Let's plug in 0 for x. h of 0 is 3 to the power of 0 plus 2 which is 3 squared, which is 9, so 0, 9. This might be a little bit off the chart. Let's check. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Actually, we make it right there. And remember this, uh, so the left side gets closer and closer to our horizontal asymptote, and the right side just grows exponentially. So that's our graph. Uh, don't forget the domain and the range. The domain is going to go as far left and as far right as we want. So negative infinity to positive infinity. And for the range, it will never go below the horizontal asymptote. It will actually never touch the horizontal asymptote. But it will keep getting closer and closer and closer to zero. And so we don't touch it, so parentheses, but it's our boundary line. So zero comma infinity. Next we're going to skip down to 13 and uh, the instructions for 10 through 15 say find and graph the composite function. So the notation may look a, a little foreign to you at first but what this is saying is um, this, this reads well, they give you the function g, okay, which is an absolute value function. They give you the function f, which is linear. And they're saying take f, which is x plus 1, and plug it into g. When you plug it into g, you're, you're taking that uh, x minus 1, and you're replacing the x value in g with the x minus 1. So the way this turns out is I'm going to write everything that g is. So g is negative 2 absolute value of x, but instead of x, I'm just going to leave it blank for a second, plus 1. Instead of putting x there, I'm going to put an x minus 1. So what we've done is we've taken f and we've plugged it into g and that's what we call composition of functions. Um, so we found it. 
and now we need to graph it. So notice this is an absolute value function. And actually, not only absolute value, but a specific type. It's a linear absolute value function. And it's been translated that x minus 1 moves us to the right one and the plus one moves us up one. So we're going to go right one, up one, from the parent graph point. Linear absolute value makes a v-shape. The parent graph has a point at zero, zero, but we, from zero, zero, we move up one, right one, so there at one, one is our, um, is our vertex of this v. I need another point, so I'm going to pick a uh, something to the right, I'll pick 2. And if I plug in 2 into that function, I get a y value at negative 2 times the absolute value of 2 minus 1 plus 1. I'm going to work with the absolute value first because that's like my parentheses. 2 minus 1 is 1. Absolute value of a positive is still positive, so this is negative 2 times 1 plus 1. Do multiplication next. And lastly, addition. And we end up with negative 1. So 2, negative 1. So that's the right side of the V shape. And then I'm going to, from the vertex to that point, I went down 2, right 1. So I'm going to go down 2, left 1 to find the, a point for the left side. And there's my graph. Now I'm going to skip down to 17. Part A, well for 16 to 18, uh, you're going to graph and label the graph of F and of G on the same grid. And then part B, you're going to describe the translation from F to G. <coughs> Excuse me. So starting with F, um, we are, um, I'll do F and blue. Both of these are absolute value. Or I should say linear absolute value. And so for F of X, uh, there's a translation that min X minus, the one half doesn't translate anything. That kind of gives you the width of the V and tells you if it opens up or down, because if it's positive, it's going to open up. But the minus 3, the x minus 3, and the plus 1 are your translation. The x minus 3 tells us to move to the right 3, and the plus 1 tells us to move up 1 from our parent graph point. The parent graph point of the absolute value is at 0, 0. So from 0, 0, I can move right 3, up 1. And that's the vertex of our V. I need another point. Um, I'm going to <coughs> pick a value for X that uh, what, when I subtract 3 from it, it's going to be divisible by the denominator 2. So any value for X. So um, I'll pick... I pick 5. I don't want to pick 3 because 3 is, uh, I already know where that point is. But if I pick 5, I get 5 minus 3, which is 2. And I can divide that by 2. So so I'm going to plug 5 into function f. Sorry. Keeps moving on me here. So f of 5 is going to be 1 half times the absolute value of 5 minus 3 plus 1. 5 minus 3 is 2. Absolute value of 2 is just 2. 1 half times 2 is 2 over 2 which is 1, so you get 1 plus 1, you end up with 2 as an answer. So 5, 2 
is uh, is what we want. That's the right side of the V. And from the vertex to that point, I went up one over two. Notice that's my slope, up one over two. So I could have also used that slope to find this. If I go up one left two, I got the left side of the V. I'm going to change colors and, and work in green for G of X. So for G of X, uh, we get, remember that one half is <coughs> gives the slope, and it's got the same slope, so the same width kind of thing for the V. Uh, the p X plus one tells us move to the left one from the parent graph. The plus four tells us to move up four from the parent graph point. So starting at zero, zero, I'm going to go left one, up one, two, three, four, right here. And this time I'm going to use the slope. So that one half is the slope of the right side, so from that green point that we just put on there, I'm going to go up one, right two, and up one, left two. And we got our V-shape. So that's part A. We graphed. I didn't label. I'm going to label these. So it says label. So this is G of X here. And in blue, I'm going to put F of X here. So we graphed and we labeled F of X and G of X on the same grid. Part B says describe the translation from F to G. So from blue to green here. And in order to do that, just pick one point. I'm going to pick the vertex point of each, and I'm going to ask myself, how do I get from the first vertex to the second vertex? And you can see I, I'm going to go left, one, two, three, four, and I'm going to go up, one, two, three. So that's what I'm going to write. I'm going to say translate Just, just a fancy way of saying move. Translate left four units and up three units. And that's all I'm going to do on this one.